When we publish an event, we need to decide what information to include in the event data. And there are two common approaches to this. Either you include just a bare minimum, and therefore a light event, or you include a rich set of contextual data or rich events. So in this lesson, let's compare these two approaches. Light events tell you something has happened, but they don't carry much contextual data. For example, they will tell you an order has been placed by a customer and give you the user ID, the order ID, and the restaurant ID without any information about any of these entities. These events are simple and they don't use much bandwidth. And because EventBridge charges for events in 64 kilobyte chunks, so for large events with lots of contextual data, it's potentially more cost efficient to not include everything, especially if you plan to store the event in, say, a DynamDB table, in which case the chunk sizes are even smaller. So cost efficiency becomes an even more important consideration. But if a subscriber receives the event and they need more information about the entities involved in order to process the event, then they will have to go and fetch them from the relevant services to hydrate the IDs. This opens up opportunities for race conditions to creep in, whereby between the time when the event was published to when it was received by the subscriber, something could have changed in the order, which can lead to unexpected behaviors and the hard to troubleshoot bugs in production. So this approach comes with some pretty significant disadvantages. And because you have to make those additional queries to other systems, it can also end up raising the total cost of the system because there are more load on the system overall. Plus, all these API calls will need authentication and authorization, and you need to keep the API spec in sync. So when the services are updated, you need to update the subscriber accordingly. And you may also need circuit breakers as well to protect against problems like thundering herd and the retry storms. So if additional queries are required, they can bring in a whole range of additional complexities. And bear in mind that we might have more than one subscriber, and these trade-offs can apply to each one of them. So the true impact of these additional queries to fetch contextual data can be multiplied by the number of subscribers, and this can become really painful in a complex system. Rich events, on the other hand, carry more contextual data about the event itself. For example, instead of just the IDs, you will have the contextual data about the user, the order, and the restaurant at the time when the event was published, which compared to light events has much more data, which uses up more bandwidth and is potentially more costly to transmit, process, and store. But it saves the subscribers from having to make extra queries to fetch those contextual data, which as we discussed before, had to be done by each subscriber and there can be many subscribers for a given event, so the savings here can also be significant. And by reducing the need for actual queries, we also reduce the amount of integration points between different components and therefore reduce the coupling between them. And having more data at your fingertip should also support more complex business logic and decision-making processes as well. So suffice to say, neither approach is perfect, the single most important question to consider is, does the event contain enough information for most subscribers to proceed? Because all the problems with light events stem from these extra requests that a subscriber needs to make. If we know what the subscriber needs, it will be so easy to just use a light-ish event that gives you a fully expanded order as opposed to just the order ID if we know that's everything the subscriber would need. But wait, as an event publisher, I don't know and I shouldn't have to care who are listening to the event because events are not targeted at anyone in particular. And even if you satisfy all the subscribers you have today by expanding the order ID into a fully fledged order object, a new subscriber might come along tomorrow and needs you to expand the restaurant ID as well. And eventually you just end up having rich events. So instead of guessing what a subscriber may or may not need, how about we just publish both events? So every time we publish an event, we publish a light version and a rich version. And each subscriber can choose which one they want based on their needs. And if we choose to store the events ourselves, say in a DynamDB table, we too can decide which version of the event to store and store only the light version if cost is a concern. We might even do it on a case-by-case -case basis 
depending on the type of event. Okay, so that's it for now on the light versus rich event. I will see you in the next lesson. Hi, I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you do, why not check out these other videos and learn more about serverless development.